Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do a few more examples of how to find the radius of convergence. Here we have the infinite series and the end term in the series. Again, we can check for convergence by taking the ratio test and the ratio will be equal to a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So we take this term right here, we add 1 to every one of the n's and we get 1 divided by 2 times n plus 1 minus 1 times x to the n plus 1 power divided by 1 over 2 times n minus 1 times x to the n. Okay, the x is also easy. We have x to the n plus 1 divided by x to the n is simply x. But what about this here? Let's simplify that. So we get 1 divided by 2n and then plus 2 minus 1, that is plus 1, divided by 1, and here we have 2n minus 1. And of course, x to the n plus 1 divided by x to the n is simply x. Now, of course, when we divide by a fraction, the same as multiplying by its inverse, so this becomes 2n minus 1 over 2n plus 1 times x. And now we're ready to find the limit of that. The limit, as n goes to infinity of the ratio, is equal to, and of course we should take the absolute value of that, so it gives us 2n minus 1 over 2n plus 1 times x. And notice that as n becomes very large, the minus 1 in the numerator and the plus 1 in the denominator become insignificant, so we simply get 2n divided by 2n, and as n approaches infinity, this ratio will go to 1, so this simply becomes equal to x. And now we know that the, fun the function or the infinite series will converge if the absolute value sign of this, and of course I should put an absolute value sign around it, if the absolute value of x is less than 1. And this, of course, then becomes the radius of convergence. Which means the value then of the interval will be a total of 2, but we need to know where it starts and where it ends. So we can do that by solving for x here, which means that minus 1 must be less than x, must be less than the positive value. So this gives you the range of values between negative 1 and positive 1 for which the series will converge when x becomes that value. And you can see that the middle value is 0, and then the distance from the middle value to either end of the range of the interval is 1, which means that's the radius of convergence. And that's how it's done.